talking about the sticks of self-defense or how to use a stick for self-defense. In this case, we're talking about staff in three different sizes of staff. We're going to start with any size, whatever you have is the right size staff for you to work with. You can have a um, broom handle, cut the broom off, and then you've got your martial arts staff. But the martial arts staff comes in three basic sizes. You've got this longer one, which is the bow. It's about as tall as you are, a little taller or a little shorter. For 72 inches, doesn't matter as long as you get something that's longer or you can have something that resembles more of a hiking staff or a hiking stick, which is the Joe. And that is the second one. This is the medium size martial arts staff. So that's two. And then the third one is the shorter Hanbo, the Japanese Hanbo or Okinawan Hanbo that you see in Aikido and you see in other styles of martial arts like Jiu Jitsu or not Jiu Jitsu, but Ninja Jitsu, old style Jiu Jitsu, not the Brazilian stuff, but when they use the weapons, they like to use something about the length of a walking stick. So I'm gonna show you some things that you can do that are different with each one, but some things that are similar and how to start warming up. We're gonna warm up with the long staff, but like I said, warm up with whatever you've got. You have all three like I do, use all three in this workout. And hello, I saw LM, I saw Justin. Hello, Justin. Who else is here right now? We're gonna go side to side. I wanna get blood flowing into your wrist, build power in the forearm, strengthen the shoulder, strengthen all the joints, but I want you to stay safe from injury as you do these warm-ups. You're gonna have a lot of striking in today's workout because I want you to learn more self-defense style martial arts staff. Then you're gonna go on the other hand, Let's see who we have, Chuki Jr. Hello, Chuki, it's good to see you. He's turning side to side, nice and easy. This is a very hard, heavy staff. And we have uh, Mitchell, Mitchell, good to see you. Semper Fi, you're turning it over, side to side. This is a very heavy hickory staff. This is the new Quantum Protector staff. This is the one that I had designed for you if you're interested, if not, like I always say, invest your time before you invest your money. You don't have to spend any money. Pick up a broomstick and there you go. If you find that you fall in love with it and the staff becomes your weapon, whether the long staff or the medium sized Joe or the Hanbo, and you want something that's nearly indestructible, something that's handmade here in the United States, check out that first link below. You'll see all kinds of self protector canes and staffs. So you're turning it this way and they're updating the pages. You're going to see different size staffs and he's designed some collie sticks for me that I'm very excited about. A hardwood collie stick is hard to come by in the right diameter. They have these big chunky things, but you want something that's going to split the air and smash the bone, break the bone for self-defense. Going hand to hand like this starts to get you comfortable with transferring the hand. You can do this again with any of the three sizes of martial arts staff. The Joe, the bow, or the Hanbo. Just side to side. That also increases the flexibility and the stretch, giving you a lot of strength. Justin says, perfect. Kali sticks next investment for self-defense. Good. These Kali sticks, I saw a sample. Oh, and we also found a version of a lightweight cane that makes sense because I couldn't get the cane in rattan anymore. And the rattan's a little too um, flimsy, actually. So, Kane Masters has found a way to make a very, very strong, lightweight cane. It's the same cane, oak or hickory, but it's a smaller diameter. So it's extremely strong, but it's much more light, easier on the wrists. This cane, or this staff, this bow is very heavy. But that's what I like. I like to get a lot of strength in my grip. And I've been doing it for a long time, so I can go for a heavier staff like this. If hickory's too strong, go for it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think Ellen uh, says Cane Master's awesome. I think so too. This is the Cane Master's bow. That's going to be on the page here in a couple days. And uh, Panda Head says, I just use a stick. Panda, that's what I did for years and years and years. I used the painter's pole. I used the sander's pole because I would paint all day. From my father. All right, first thing you're going to do is get behind your stick. I'm going to show you first with the bow. Chuki, same thing, uh, uses a stick too, and Justin agrees. Cane Masters is a great product. All right, so you're behind it. I love that it's made here in the United States, right? American hardwood, 
And it's not, if we're made in Europe, I would love that too. Anywhere but drop ship garbage coming on a ship from China. Nothing against the Chinese people. It's that just that the whole low quality thing. They break too easy. So I'm behind it. It's between me and the threat. I'm going to point my thumb and I want to get in this position first. We're going to talk about thrusts, these slashing strikes coming at an angle or straight across down on top. We're going to talk about shoving, knocking someone back this way. We're going to talk about punching to the sides of the body, to the legs, to the head, to stop the fight, to keep yourself protected. When you learn how to use sticks for self-defense, stick self-defense fighting techniques are all based on common sense, practical moves. Now, spinning is a fun part of what I teach, but it's not necessarily part of fighting. It's not a self-defense move. Spinning isn't self-defense, although I spin to get my hands Get that callus on the hands as I spin to learn uh, proprioception, to get better timing and distance, and to build a powerful, strong grip. So you should spin, you can spin. If you love spinning, by all means spin, but understand the difference. There's a separation between self-defense techniques and the purpose of spinning. And we'll go over that, but let's first get behind it again. I wanna talk about fighting from behind your sticks. When you use stick self-defense, and Panda says, yeah, it's awesome to spin. I agree. When you're learning stick self-defense techniques or using a stick for self-defense, you always want to keep the stick between you and the threat. Always. That's the basic principle. The stick is going to give you reach advantage. That means you're going to hit them without them being able to reach you. It doesn't bleed from a knife or a uh, chunk of concrete or a broken bottle. And it's a force multiplier. It takes the strength in your body and concentrates it all on a small tip, whether it's this long martial arts staff, the medium size, or the short walking stick size, the hanbo. So from here, you're standing behind it, simply point your thumb, and I want you to practice thrusting. Now, when I say practice thrusting, I mean for 30 seconds, with one hand in front of the other, and you're gonna start nice and smooth, slow as smooth, smooth as fast, and what you'll see is that my hands are turning I'm locking them out. I'm locking this front arm, this front elbow. It's one of the reasons I wear these short sleeve uh, martial arts uniforms, by the way. I want you to see my wrists and my elbows. That's locked, that's locked. This turns up and also locks. Now you go slow and then a little faster, a little faster, making sure that you exhale. You can hear it as I snap it in and lock it into my body, kind of chicken wing down here. I want to go over and over and over again. And that's true with this bow. And it's going to be the same motion with your Joe staff. But I want to show you in just a minute how that looks a little different. And with the Hanbo, it's going to be different again. Now today, because this is a self-defense, this is a stick fighting techniques video, I want you to change your hand position like this. Slide it down in this position, or if you want, stand behind it practice just turning it into this backhand. Sometimes I forget. I've been doing this for 30 years. It naturally finds my hand. Most of the time, I still miss, but almost all the time it comes up and it's in the perfect position. So maybe you want to start here and do both parts of the motion. Turn the thumb, strike. Now watch also as I push and I start to warm up, I'm gonna move my body a little, and then I'm gonna step with that front foot, and the back foot is gonna follow through. Watch my feet, see what that looks like real quick. From here, turn, step, I'm gonna step and pull, step and pull. Anytime you move your body forward, you're putting all of the power, all of the energy from your body, however much your body weighs. I have a heavy body, right? all the power of my body, big leg muscle, all my thick mass going through that tiny little tip, right through his face, throat, through his body for self-defense. So it's in the opposite hand. I don't think I'm at 30 seconds yet. I keep yapping, right? And then step. So that's your first self-defense move. I want you to strike really, really hard. Um, Chuki says it's hard Get the same spot try, or twice by thrusting. It is now. It is now. But let me promise you, 
the more you do it, the less hard it will be. In other words, let's say this is my target. I'm going to hit that same spot every single time. My accuracy will go up and up and up the more I practice it. So will yours. If you really want to get good, take a sock, one of those funny ass socks. You guys might, may or may not know that I uh, recently started doing blessing bags for the homeless again because there's a lot around here and I was complaining all the time. Couldn't stand myself, listening to myself whine. And I said, I got to do something about it. If you have a problem, do something about it. Quit whining, right? So anyway, my, my daughter and her friend put together all these little blessing bags, some water, some cleaning wipes. I got a bunch of things, you know, from the store put in there. Something that somebody would need if they're living on the street. Anyway, a woman came in the other day and she said, I saw your blessing bags and here's a bunch of socks. Can you put socks in there? Cause people need socks. I said, Br brilliant, right? Great idea. So anyway, so I, I got these, she, she had those, um, the long athletic socks. And I thought that's a really good idea because that gives them more coverage and stuff. It takes away a lot of the, uh, especially down here, there's a lot of, uh, mosquitoes that bite them up at night. Pull that up, you don't get bit as much, but you take one of those old socks and you take a tennis ball and you stick it inside the sock and you take some string and you tie the top of the sock really, really well. Get a good knot in there and then you loop it over a rafter, uh, a rafter, a rafter in the roof, a roof to rafter, a rafter in the garage or maybe you're outside, you have a tree branch, you can take it with you to the park with your staff or, and then you're going to use this with all size staffs. It's just a target. It's an aiming target. I'll show you guys how to make one. Super simple. Tennis ball in a sock, wrap it, tie a tight knot, throw the string up, loop it around, something that's overhead, and now it's hanging here in the air. And you're gonna look at it and practice. And if you do that, I promise if you add that to your training, that's going to improve. Every time you hit that thing, you're gonna miss it the first 20 times. And then you're gonna start to hit more often. And by the time you're done, after two or three weeks, bam, every time you hit that thing, it's going to snap and it's going to, you're gonna, your accuracy is going to go way, way up. And then when you thrust, you're going to hit the same spot every single time because you trained accuracy. Speed and power is important, but accuracy, without accuracy, speed and power doesn't matter because you can't hit it, right? So train accuracy, speed, and power, and doing it with a staff is, is beautiful. It's brilliant. Now, from here, let's talk about the Joe, which is the medium-sized medium staff. And the reason I like to train with these the hiking staff, or the, uh, the, the bow, the long staff, th that's pretty unique, right? So you get, thank you, Justin, you get, you get a long staff, um, unless you're Gandalf the Great or whatever he was called, you know, the uh, Tolkien thing, the uh, Hobbit guys. So you got the Gandalf guy, he's carrying that big staff, so he's got a staff. If you're not Gandalf, you're probably just gonna carry your bow. But if you wanna train with a Joe, the Joe, it looks exactly like a hiking stick or a telemarking pole or a, um, you know, a, a downhill skiing kind of thing. You see people all the time, they go out and they walk with that uh, when they're walking around the neighborhood. And then and no one questions it. No one thinks about it. They, oh, that person's just maybe, you know, maybe they're getting ready for a European trek or they're going to the Himalaya or they're going to hike the Appalachian Trail, something like that. So now you've got this or the Pacific Coast Highway, right? If we're on the other side. Dumbledore, I don't, I don't know anything about the Harry Potter. I do know that's Harry Dumbledore's Harry Potter reference. I've never seen it. Don't hate me. I'm just I'm just of the wrong age. It was, it, I was old when it came out, and uh, it didn't just didn't appeal. So from here, I couldn't relate. I do the same thing. I turn it, pops in the back hand, thrust. Now you'll see the big difference here is I'm adding a lot of extra room by simply sliding it through my hand as I turn over. You can also do that with the bow, but it's not as necessary because it's such a long piece of wood. With your hiking stick, and what I was trying to get to was train with the Joe, and then if you wanna carry a nice looking hiking stick, so people say you really are using a hiking stick, go for like one of those, I can't think of the name right now, but they make all these different indestructible hiking sticks, or just the one that you got the last time you were on a trek and you picked it up and it's really cool and it's like gnarled and it's got a little knot there, carry that. And then you have a perfect self-defense weapon or self-defense tool if you ever need it. But train with the Joe, I always would just hike with my Joe. I had a different Joe, I didn't make it from Ohio, but I had this one made in Hickory by Cane Masters and it's got these teeth on it. Those teeth are good grip, but they also, 
they grip into the flesh, right? That's gonna leave a mark for self-defense. That's okay, that's what we're using it for. So from here, I pop in the backhand and I thrust. And again, when I do that, I'm adding a little room. Now, since I have the Joe, we're gonna keep going with the Joe and talk about the second kind of strike. And there are more thrusts, we're gonna do more thrusts in a minute. But the second kind of strike is going to be a slashing motion or chopping motion, however you wanna think about it. Slashing because it, it, it's almost like you're fighting with a sword and you're pulling with one hand and you're extending with the other one and it's coming through, right? And you can, and the coolest thing about this weapon is that it's designed because of its length to slide through your hands. And if you get this one, this is that Kane Masters protector Joe, the Quantum Joe, the one I asked him to build for us. This one, this feels like butter. So does that, that staff is crazy. The bow, this, this was heavy too. I, I, my, I think, I don't know if I'm any stronger, but I feel stronger just using that thing for the last two weeks. So I'm behind my stick, I point the thumb, and I thrust. Another way you can do it is if it is right next to you, just bring it up into your other hand simply by turning. Maybe you can't turn your thumb because you're not there in time. You just bring it up like this. Then you strike. Strike from the other side. So on this one, since the Joe is a little unique, and I want to show you something unique about each one, I do want you to practice from here, get it into the back hand. See how I kind of pull it up? This hand is sliding down, and then it goes back down. I almost smashed the camera. I had to pull myself back. And then it smashes hard. Then I want you to walk your hands and strike on the other side. Or if you want to, here's a unique thing that you do with the Joe. Your hands go to the side, one hand's palm down, one hand's palm up. Then you can strike with that side. Now it's almost the length, the full, you're using that full length. And it's almost like you're using a katana or a Japanese sword or another kind of sword for self-defense. It's a very powerful weapon. The key to remember is if your hands come together, you've now created a pivot point and you'll have a hard time stopping it, which exposes you for being uh, st struck. Richard says, hello from Tallahassee. Hello, Richard. It's good to have you right now. But if you stop your hands here, where you have at least one hand width, a little bit wider, maybe one and a half, it doesn't matter how much. It's about as wide as your shoulders. But you stop before your hands come together, you'll be able to stop it better. And you'll be able to always fight with it in front of your body. You can either bring it all the way back and create maximum striking power, but if you don't have as much time, you can just change your hands in this position, strike here and strike here for self-defense. See how I'm doing that? I'm just opening. So to practice that, you simply, you can start here, one hand under, one hand over, slide the bottom one in, top one, turn it over, slide it out, slide it out. Gradually, you're gonna to start to move them at the same time. It's kind of a balance exercise. You wanna find the hands reaching the middle, and then you go the other way. Or, if you want, go shorter. Just from here to here. Or, keep it in front of you. Practice this, practice this. You don't need to bring it from all the way up from here or from your shoulder. You can bring it from here and still from create a lot of, look how strong that is. Not even a mark. I thought for sure when I hit, hit that chain, I would see a mark. But you're coming down hard and fast, hard and fast for self-defense. And think about the targets you're gonna strike, temple, eyes, nose. You're gonna either uh, turn off their operating system, take their vision away. Hank says, good afternoon, hello. Hank, good to see you. From here to here, it's extending the front arm, extending the front arm, and pulling the back arm down. And again, this is the same way you would fight if you were using a, yeah, kind of like a boxing jab set. Same way you would fight if you were fighting with that Japanese sword. The bottom hand always carries the weight of the sword and pulls through. The front hand always accelerates the strike and aims it. Remember accuracy? You can do the same thing. Oh, hello, Leandro from Brazil, from here, striking, str 
striking, just over and over again. Or like I said, you can go all the way out and practice bringing them down in this position. So these, this first angle, think of how you might hit them. You might hit for self-defense. Take out their, hit them in the head, uh, hopefully knock them out. That way if they have a knife or another weapon, you don't have to worry about it. Maybe the jaw, the ear, the neck, hit that vagal process, and the, uh, I hope I'm saying that right. The blood flushes out, they fall down. Go for the joints, which break easy, especially with a big piece of hickory like this, the King Master's uh, self-protector staff. So, and it comes in here, comes in here, maybe into the uh, elbow or the hand, maybe they're reaching out to try to stab or grab or pinch or pull, hit you with something, smashing down at that angle. And then you can bring it straight across coming in uh, in a uh, horizontal strike. And you can do that either this way or this way. So this is my left hand, right hand sliding through, and I'm stopping before I hit the camera, or I would always follow through, always follow through in your strikes, or simply punching, like you're punching with the back hand, sliding back through this way. So either this way or this way. That's the beautiful thing about the split grip palms facing each other. Ontario, Isola 68, in Ontario. So hello to Ontario, striking through, striking through. Both of those are right, and then straight down on top, straight down on top. This is also an amazing stretch for your arms. Just try not to bring it this way. See how my arm is coming out and up? I wanna to try to reach it from here. I wanna go straight up. It's more efficient and it's stronger and it's faster. For self-defense, you want to go for whatever's going to be fastest, whatever's strongest, whatever's most efficient. So you just lift and drop. And again, the basic move is your hands are on the outside, one is over, one is under. From here, you can also practice this thrusting motion or the ski, the um, basic spearing motion. The back hand turns and locks. In this case, I'm sliding through the front hand. I always say pull cue, but that's, that's how I hold my pull cue. But this way, right? And this hand is still gonna turn over and lock at the very end. But look how much more distance I have between me and the threat. That's what you want. So you can practice this way. There's your thrusting motion. But whatever you do, always start Nice and easy, 10 seconds. Second 10 seconds, a little stronger. Third 10 seconds, harder, stronger. Maybe you wanna to start to switch your feet, switch your feet. So this is my right hand, right foot comes forward, that puts my body, see how that's a smaller target? That's a wide target, that's smaller. So you're coming through here, striking here, striking here. Step left with the left foot, left hand forward, right foot. And then you do this for 30 seconds. This is a great workout, by the way. And then maybe go into thrust, thrust, all with this Joe. <sighs> Trying to see how close I can get to the camera without breaking it. So if I disappear, you know what happened? Or if it's just a crack on the screen. And then this twisting motion, you're going to see this with the Hanbo but this is very unique. This doesn't happen with the bow, it's just too long. But I'm turning this back hand under and up, just like this. So from here, and I'm sliding, accelerating. This hand is helping it come forward. I'm just pushing along that buttery smooth hickory sh uh, shaft, smashing. Think about hitting the side of the head. Maybe they're punching, you're knocking their hand out of the way. Maybe they've got a sword in your uh, samurai from 100 years ago. I don't know. Boom. I'd be learning that 100 years now, right? This motion can also be done with it in the other position. So you don't even have to change your hands. One hand, because this, see this? That's still very strong. This is strong. That's the beauty. It's one of the reasons that the Joe remains my favorite of all staff for self-defense. The bow I like because it's kind of a meditative weapon for me and I can spin it and do all kinds of fun stuff. But the Joe, 
It's just, it's a perfect size. It's a hiking stick. And just so fast, so effectively, you can defend yourself. And I want to show you one more way to hold the Joe, which is again unique, but it's not unique. Let's start, go back to the bow real quick. Because you can also do it with the bow. With the bow, if you're walking like Gandalf or Bumbledore, Dumbledore, Bumbledore, um, it's a Bumbledore, it's in front of your body. You're standing on the top of the mountain and you're calling in the lightning or something. I don't know. I, I forget the movie. That, that's the, the Gandalf one. Anyway, it's in front of you. It's between you and the threat already. This is what you want. You just point your thumb and then you're, it's all in, right? Fight's not over till you win. Dumbledore, okay, thank you. If it's in the backhand, this is a little less aggressive. Immediately, you're going to pull your elbow up like you're going to guard your head. Your hand comes up above your ear. And you want to keep it tight. You don't want to be out like this. I don't know if we have any, uh, uh, I know we've got a couple of Marines out there. You ever see it in the movie? I can't watch a movie. So if there's a, an action movie or a military movie or something like that, or a cop movie, and the guy's walking around like this, I got to turn it off. It just drives me nuts. I'm like, get your elbow down, right? I don't know why they, they think this is how you shoot. Maybe some people are teaching this shoot like that. Anyway, I had to break from the script a little bit. I bring it in here, right? Straight up. This is, this is acceptable, this is too much. That's just weak. That shifts all the weight onto the back of the shoulder, which is just not strong. You keep that down, it's very strong. You can move, you'll move with it. And your whole shoulder is protected and it's, your whole body's gonna move. You're gonna be able to defend yourself better. So don't do this. Yeah, the movies are funny, right? Backhand, so this is my right hand. My right foot is behind my left. That's why I'm a smaller target. And I lift. Now from here, this is one of my most favorite positions because it's most powerful. When I strike on the targets for self-defense, I generate the most force in this position. And so when it's here, it also, look how much distance is between me and the threat. If they have a knife or another weapon, I have at least, I don't know, three feet of wood right there, three feet of hard hickory. From here, just get it up. Then thrust. It's simply straightforward. This is a very strong, powerful motion you'll be able to do. And think of eyes, nose, mouth, throat, solar plexus. And how do you improve your accuracy? Hang a ball in a sock. Hang it from something and just hit it over and over. From here, boom, there's that thrust. There's that punch across the jaw. Straight down on top, lift them up under their legs or up under the chin. Swing through, swing through. Then... Here's the next motion, boxing his ears for self-defense. And all I'm doing is I'm, it would be the same as if I'm just punching like this. And because the staff is in my hand, I now have created a leveraged tool. I'm leveraging the length, six feet of hickory, from one side of his head to the other. Maybe the arms or maybe the legs. Maybe it's a vicious animal and I have to create distance, thrusting, thrusting, slashing, come across, thrust again. You can even turn and lift them up, right? From here, here, switching your feet. If you want to practice, practice in multiple directions. Come this way, turn around, one, two, three, four. Come down, practice here. But practice the same way when you sometimes use the... Um... Hank made a really good point. He said sometimes you see those balls the, the tennis ball hanging from a string, they're in the garage so that you don't <laughs> drive into the living room while your spouse is watching TV when you came home and you had a little bit too much. Or you say you're getting tired. Oh, I don't know why, right? The, you know what I'm talking about. The ball hits the thing and you know you've gone far enough. Or just pay attention. Nowadays, the cars have sensors in them and they, they do all that stuff for you all the time. But that's what I'm talking about. Hang that ball. Practice striking, practice strike, work on your accuracy drill. And, and then change the position of the ball. And don't just hit it when it's not hit it. Don't reach forward and stop it, okay? When, when you have a bag like this, punch. See how it starts to move? People are working out all the time. Boom, boom. They love to make these things move. It annoys me too. Just like the gun in the, in the movie with the thing up. 
or the guys that hold those guns sideways, it's not supposed to move. Like, it's not supposed to swing. You're supposed to hit it, and then you're punching it, makes it stop swinging. And then if it starts swinging too much, boom, 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 you want to hit it in a way to make it stop swinging again. The tennis ball is going to be the same thing. When that tennis ball starts to swing, you want to not reach out and grab it with your hand, but strike it, strike it, strike it in a way that it stops swinging so much. And that takes skill, but that's what you're here for. You're here to develop that skill. This is for your growth. Now, let's go back to the Joe, because the Joe has a unique move that is shared with the Hanbo, but you don't get it on the, um, the long staff. And that is, in the backhand, it's gonna come up and across. It has a spinning strike. And we warmed up, not spinning, but turning. This is how we warmed up today, just getting blood into the joint, and we went hand to hand. That's the most that we've spun so far today. From here, in this hand, I'm gonna bring it forward, and that's gonna strike. And again, hard hickory, very heavy. I come up, and it hits it so fast. This is another way to use that swinging ball for accuracy. Just hit so fast, bring this hand up, guard the head, one, and then you can hit him on the way back. If you want, practice your spinning, your figure eight, this is unique to the Joe. And then there's a finger roll and it gets it into this long position. Again, like you're using a long Japanese sword or katana, which you can then effectively fight with. This is also fighting, especially you get that bottom hand on there. And then when you're ready, you get it back into this grip. And I wanna show you how to do that real quick. So if I'm turning, when I bring it to this side, the same side as my body, and the long side is facing up, I'm going to bring this finger behind it. The first finger, the nose picker, right? The pointer. So from here, I don't know if that's really the nose picker, but not for me, it's too big. Uh, my, you're here, right? And then, by the way, you see those posters, I go into kids' schools, and I I've been teaching kids' schools for 30 years, the nonprofit, I had a, um, how to pay attention in the classroom. That's it. That's my magic skill. You know, I can help your kids pay attention in the classroom, and especially if they have ADD, ADHD, or they're anywhere on the spectrum, I can help. But I see those posters that says, integrity is what you do when no one's watching. And I always think that's funny. It's like people pick their nose, hopefully. Some people don't care if you're watching. But, you know, they scratch, they readjust their... Uh, under clothes, no one's watching. That's not integrity, is it? No. Integrity is when you're the same. You're the same with your family, you're the same with your work or school, and you're the same with your sports teams or in your leisure time, you're the same. Integrity is soundness, sameness. When, when a ship loses integ integrity, the, it's got a hole in the boat. They're going to sink. So this finger pops over there. Then, you continue the spin and your palm is facing up and now it's facing out. So the palm is facing up and then it's gonna face out. Then I catch it with my thumb and I pull the first finger around and I put it into this position. Now I have this grip. And with most of these Japanese style weapon, I will not squeeze the first two fingers, but I'll keep them relaxed. And that allows me more flexibility and speed in my strike. And the bottom three fingers are carrying the weight of the staff. To get it back into that um, negative position, I do the same thing. Palm faces the sky, first two fingers. I bring it up, my hand goes out. This time the thumb comes around, my finger comes back to where it was in the original spot, and now I'm in this position. So if I'm spinning, spinning almost, there we go. Spinning, and this can be part of your warm up. This is a way, and so where I would say that spinning with the bow is not effective self-defense, spinning with the Joe is effective self-defense because of the length of the staff. And again, the guy's coming up aggressively, you just turn your body and it explodes quickly into the side of his head for self-defense. So you're bringing it from here to change that hand position one more time, change it back, 
And I have a lot of Joe videos on this site if you want to break all these strikes down in more detail. I probably have over, I know I have over 500 just on the long staff. And then I think the next uh, largest category is the Joe. And um, there's probably about 150 just with the Joe. So if you want to learn any of these techniques, just look up my last name and Joe. And they're somewhere on this channel. Or send me a message. Go to pasquinelli.com and there's a contact box there. Send me what you want me to work on or show you or what I can help you with. And I would love to be of any kind of help. Send me your videos. Drop box them to me and I'll give you some feedback when I'm able to. Uh, Jason, thank you for that $10 donation. I really, really appreciate that. That's very helpful. Bring it around here. Bring it back around here and just practice. Oh, I forgot to show me my favorite technique. Uh, Richard, you're welcome for the detail on the switch. My favorite technique with this size staff is just straight in. Straight in, up under the chin, into the nose, into the solar plexus, into the groin, but just straight. And it's very powerful. The length that creates a little, but you have extra energy here coming into here. But your body, it's just that principle of using your entire the turning extension. Extend the arm, extern, extend the shoulders and the hips. If you want, step into it and you'll launch them for self-defense. Very effective from here. Hey, buddy, you're too close. And then just straight in. Once you come straight in, you can follow through with the second strike. So you can hit from here, one, two, very fast. As it comes around, you can accelerate it, get it back into this position, and then strike, strike, hand change, and then you go to work with the Joe. So yeah, a lot of power, Mushy says, a lot of power going to a small area. Exactly, that's the whole principle of fighting with sticks. You're concentrating power, but you're also multiplying power because when two hands come onto it, you now create a leveraged, a big piece of wood, right? A big leveraged tool. Now, from here, I want to talk about the new addition, the one we've been, I used to teach this one a long, long time ago. It's been a while since we, uh, we, we did anything with it. And this is the walking stick. And I think that now, as the world becomes seemingly crazier, at least the news are reporting more violence. And there is more violence. It's not just the news. But people are looking for alternative. Not everybody can carry a gun or wants to carry a gun. So they're looking for ways to defend themselves. And a lot of older Americans, especially older Europeans, older Asians, say, can I carry a, um, or use my walking stick? And they don't want to wear a, uh, use a cane. Sometimes you don't want to use a cane. You don't want the crook on it. It makes you look old or whatever. Yeah, Jason, so we go to the Hanbo. Jason says Hanbo. So the Hanbo is about 36 inches. This one is exactly 36 inches. And it's, it, it's meant to lean your weight on. It's meant to be a walking stick. And there are two ways to take it off of, from this position into the fighting position, or self-defense position, when you learn uh, fighting with stick techniques, or stick fighting techniques. And then I'm going to show you other ways to carry it that might make more sense. But imagine that the threat is coming in. You've paid attention. You have situational awareness. The threat's coming in. You want to get into a better position, which is a uh, self-defense principle. Your hand is simply going to go from on the top of the cane to behind the cane. So it just slides down the back of your walking cane. Now from here, I have that motion that I just finished the Joe with. So from here, you know, I say, you're getting too close to me, back up. And then I can step straight in and drive this amount straight through my target. With, and this is, that's an inch and a half. Now those two are made by cane masters and they cost, a, it's a little bit of an investment of, of money. Just not that much and it's gonna last 20, 30 years, I promise you. This one, it's 10 bucks at Lowe's, right? And it cost me a little bit of uh, time and energy. So a little bit of money, a little bit of time, a little bit of oil, a little bit of sandpaper, and I made it myself. Now you can make all of these yourself. You never have to spend your money. You can always invest your time or invest your money. I did the math and I said, how can I make one that's that good and I thought, well, the guy that makes these, that's all he does. That's all he does. He makes those and canes year round for the last 20 years. Like the actual carpenter. That's all he does. He has all the tools. He has all the oils. He has all the processes. And he can make those while he's asleep. And it's going to be a thousand times better. 
this is going to take me a lot of hours and how much is my time worth? Now, a long time ago when I had lots of time and no money, I make it myself. Now I have no time and no money, <laughs> um, but, I, but I have a good friend who's going to make it for me, right? So either way, either invest your time or invest your money and maybe it's a passion for you, so that works, right? But it doesn't, it, either way, it doesn't matter. Either make it or buy it, but find one and they'll work. So first technique, your hand slides down and it's that simple thrust. And like I said, if you step and thrust at the same time, notice your hand always comes up for self-defense. Generate all your force right here. Second, there's that swinging motion. It comes in very fast and it's very hard. This is a $10, $9.99 or $9.69 or $7.99 or whatever. And um, the, uh, like a dollar's worth of sandpaper and oil made out of oak. It's an inch and a quarter. That's what I was starting to tell you. So it's thicker. It's like a big knuckle. Big knuckle come right in. Oh, good. Richard said he uh, followed a suggestion yesterday. He stopped at Lowe's for Joe and Hanbo Dows. And I saw Hank, you were talking about your dad. Asked you why you take uh, notes in uh, firearms instruction. You take notes everywhere, right? You don't beat your mind like a filing cabinet. You write it down so you can go. Your mind's creative. Make, let it be creative. And then write down the important stuff and go back and read it. Yeah, me too, Hank. I take notes on everything. All right, so I slide down here, thrust, comes through. From here, you can do that same motion. You're in this position. There's that strike. There's that reverse thrust. And then length difference. You can go into, there my hand, slipping off a little bit. Got to work on my, there it goes. Work on my distance. Practice the same basic striking, thrusting techniques. Now, there are unique things that you do with the Hanbo that you don't do with the other one, and a lot of them have to do with taking somebody down, deflecting, and striking. I'm not big into takedowns and deflections anymore, and that's just because I've been around martial arts so long, and I've seen so many times that, yes, they all work, but they work when you have a trained partner who's feeding you the right techniques. When we're talking about save your life self-defense, we want to fight with sticks, when you're learning stick fighting techniques, for self-defense, and you're talking about this staff, I want you to only, know, not only know, learn the other stuff, but I want you to focus on what's gonna work and keep you safe immediately, right? Learn the intricate, esoteric, aesthetic, you know, pretty, esoteric, interesting. Learn the academic parts of martial arts after you learn the practical. So the practical is slide your hand down the back, punch him in the face, swing it through, put that other hand, and start to do the same strikes you did, thrusting motions that you did with the other staffs for self-defense. And then later, learn all of the fancy things that you can do with each one of the staffs. And then you'll have the best of both worlds. But if you focus on, I'm gonna time them. You know, I'm gonna time them, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna step to side, smash, I'm gonna bring it through, I'm gonna bring it here, from here, I'm gonna bring this one fast, then do, and all of the cool things that I've learned over the years that do work, especially with a trained partner, but I'm not going to depend on them for self-defense. I'm going to pick up a stick, and I'm going to have it like this, or I'm going to have it like this, and I'm going to pick it up like this. This is the second way, by the way. If you're holding, holding it down this way, simply lift it up. Let me show you. Let me drop the camera just a little bit. So I'm here. Second way for self-defense, just like this. It's almost the same as pointing your thumb with the long staff, but you're just bringing it up really fast. Now, you've got a good piece of wood between you and the threat thrust right through the face or the throat or the solar plexus. Smash to the temple, smash to the arm, smash to the hand that's coming at you. Slide it through and break the jaw for self-defense. Use it in the backhand, rifle butt strike, right? Bayonet attack, bayonet attack. And then, once they're disoriented and they pull out a knife, then work on your fancy disarming techniques. But don't focus on the disarming techniques for self-defense. Learn those as part of the art of martial arts. But the martial part, the fighting part, the combat part, stick with the basics, right? You need to know both eventually, if that's your interest. But you need to know the basic strikes. That's why I don't teach too much blocking. And, um, but just since I said blocking, just think of what it is. It's a stick. If someone's swinging something at your head or trying to strike you through your face or punch you, this hand here, just push it up. 
If it's coming to your body, two hands here, push it down. To the side, it comes across and it comes across. But better than that, if they're throwing a punch to your face, it's a lot longer than his arm, right? Stick it through his teeth for self-defense. Or take your chances and try to do one of the circular blocks that are designed for punches, that are designed for all that stuff. If you look at a lot of the old, especially like the, the Joe work for police self-defense or, or especially the Hanbo, everything is based on them waiting and, and def deflecting and then striking back. And I don't know if that's cultural, you know, don't be the first one to strike or whatever, but I learned through military training and through martial arts for all these years and for practical self-defense in the last few years, shifting my whole mindset to just what works, especially in times like these with violent crimes rising, is don't block, right? Hit first. When you realize that you've crossed the line and they, they pulled a knife or they, they're coming at you or that, that uh, skateboard is at, in, in motion, coming to your face, don't try to block that skateboard. Stick it through his face and watch what happens to their body. They're coming here and then all of a sudden they're going back that way with a big piece of wood, half their teeth out of their mouth. And self-defense uh, fights over you win, right? And then all the cameras caught it and then you have to go to court and defend yourself. And you said, I said to back up. And as soon as he pulled that skateboard back, I saw the news reports on CNN trying to terrify us. And, make, and the Antifa coming around, around hitting them. So I was just ready, right? And I didn't, I didn't think, um, <laughs> no, I think I haven't. <laughs> uh, there, 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 is, there, all, there is a caveat to that. Uh, I'll tell you offline sometime. From here, just, yeah, action, action beats inaction. Don't wait, don't be the second mover. It's, if you move second, you almost always lose. I don't care what it is. It's just like when I teach the boxing class and we, we use the bell, right? and we do the timing, that makes it just a little bit more fun and different. And I said, as soon as the bell goes off, and this is a saying from special forces training that they always said, um, don't be late, don't be last, and don't be light. And the Navy SEALs say it too. Don't be late, don't be light, don't be last. The Force Recon says it. Don't be late, don't be light, don't be last. And when it comes to boxing, don't be late. <laughs> that bell goes bing, bing, bing. That guy's already hit you three times and you're trying to figure out what to do. As soon as that bell goes off, you're either moving or you're throwing a punch, or you're moving and throwing a punch. But don't be late, don't be last, don't just you know, get, get hit in the face 20 times, and then you try to throw back, and don't be la or light. Don't go, don't throw little half-hearted, um, non-committed strikes. You have to strike and try to go through your target for self-defense. If you wanna stop the fight, this is about stick fighting techniques for self-defense staff, in this case, the short staff, but it's all, the, it's all the same principles. First principle of situation awareness. Number two, get in a better position, right? Maybe you want it, this is the third way you can carry your stick. Just carry it like a stick. And you know, you're here and, you, and the guy's getting closer. You say, hey buddy, back off or back off. You either bring it into the push-up position or you bring it into the split grip position. In the push-up position, you have a shoving weapon. You have a boxing weapon to his ears. You can still strike this way and strike this way. If it's in the split uh, position, you have a shoving weapon. You have a boxing his ears weapon or his body, smashing him back. You have a thrusting weapon, you have a thrusting weapon. Bayonet strike, rifle butt. And then you have all of these coming down, striking at the angle, straight through. Maybe you wanna go for his legs because that makes sense, that's the best target, because that's part of self-defense. What can you remove or destroy? His ability to see you, breathe temporarily or permanently, right? Here, box his ears, be awake, hit him in the neck, hit him in the, in the temple, um, go to the legs, his ability to chase you, kick you, stand up, go straight through the solar plexus. He's not gonna be able to stand for longer. Go in through between the belly button and the private parts, that thin, a uh, uh, sheath of muscle to keep your guts in. Give him a hernia, but drive him to the ground on the way down for self-defense. But do something, take action. Like you said, action beats inaction. But you have to do something about it or it would not have any effect for self-defense. Action, action, action.
do it now, right? Immediate, direct, and explosive. Immediate, direct, and explosive. That's a principle of self-defense. All your strikes, immediate refers to that shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Doesn't get more straight than that, right? That's 36 inches in the straight. Here we have 54 inches of straight. And here, a full six feet of straight. 72 inches straight between me and the threat. You're standing here, the guy is coming up. You saw him coming, you didn't feel comfortable about it. All of a sudden, you need to be in a better position. You just stand like this. How are you doing? Smile at him, right? And then, if he comes aggressively, he's not gonna punch you or stab you in the, in the stick, right? He's not gonna hit that. He might try to grab it. And if he does, that's where you can twist. And you have a very powerful way to twist here. He grabs your staff, twist and push this hand going straight to the ground. Turn the backhand, kind of like you're churning butter sideways. Turn, smash, turn, smash. When I have a partner here, or you can go look at some of the other videos where I show you with a partner what happens when they grab your staff, both the long staff and the medium sized staff. We haven't done it with a Hanbo, but I'm not gonna let him get close enough to grab my staff. If he does, it's probably gonna be in the middle, right? And in this case, you're gonna to turn to 12 o'clock and six o'clock. In the old fashioned, the big clock that's up on the wall, right? So from here, they grab your staff, turn one hand up and one hand down. Doesn't matter which hand is up and which hand is down, whichever makes you more comfortable. I'm left-handed, I think my left hand naturally goes up toward my face. From here, and my left hand is palm up. Maybe if it were the opposite, my right hand would come up. So you're just gonna turn and straight down. Now, if their hand is here, when you turn here, if it goes like this, that's a compromised grip for me. And then it comes down in their face. It pops right out of their hand. If the hand turns here, that's still a compromise. It only turns so much. And then that smashes them right on the top of the head. They have both hands on it. Now they're turned and you strike them there. So you turn your hand. It works the same way for the uh, push-up grip. Turn your hand and strike. Uh, Car Flores Enterprise says, I find a four foot length to be very effective. Yes, absolutely. It doesn't matter the length either. If you go, if you're like some, uh, if it's important to you that you have the exact same inch of a Japanese man 200 years ago, then go for it, right? 36, uh, 54, and 72. But my basic rule of thumb is this one should be about where it causes your wrist to break. So in other words, if it were shorter, my wrist would be straight. If it were higher, if it were higher my wrist would be down. But this is just a natural position. This is a walking stick length. This is 36 inches. So for most, most people, that also is about where my pocket starts, in the back of my jeans. So, that, so for me, that's right. For this one, the Joe, that's right in my armpit, right where my skin starts. That's the middle of that shoulder joint. So that when I bend my elbow, it's the perfect size hiking stick for me. Now the perfect size hiking stick for you doesn't have to be the same length. So don't worry if it's not 36, 54, get the right size for you. You know, the funny thing about wood is you can always cut it down, but go, go slow. Cause if you, you can't grow it back up, you can cut it down, but you can't uh, lengthen it. The bow staff should be about as tall as you are, maybe a little taller, maybe a little shorter, but either way about as tall as you are. So if you're five, three, Shannon says five, three, four feet is your elbow, give or take armpit. That's perfect. See, you were right. You, you said that you found the four foot Joe perfect for you. That's why. So don't worry about what anybody else says. Get this thing, get this perfect for you. And like I said, if you don't, um, yeah, Mushy Megas has kicked the broom off the stick and you have it. That's how I started. Sticks, uh, worker sticks. Cause I was always, I've been working since I was four. I've been everywhere I work. I've got a stick. I'm either brooming, mopping, painting, sanding on a pole. Um, I have a, I have a, I used to have a pole that I could paint the top of a two, two story building with that long. And, I, and you can bet that I would, I would see what I could do to see if I could spin it. You take, you have to take the roller tip off or the brush tip, but, or you have a big mess, but I love that thing, big and heavy and awkward and wieldy because it's made out of fiberglass or something, but find the right stick that perfect for you. Make your own, invest your time, invest your uh, money. And then 
you know, time first. Always see if it's the right fit for you before you go in. Thanks again for that $10 donation. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you again this week. We're working, we'll get a lot of videos coming up this week. Thank you.